Okay, so what you want to do is I'm gonna I'm probably gonna knock down the um, probably gonna knock down the uh, the turning ability of that rudder rig a little bit. But when you're when you throw it all the way over to one side, that's essentially throwing the rudder all the way over. So in real life, if you take a look at pictures of aircraft carriers that I've actually posted in the thread, they will do a pretty steep bank. And it's unbelievable how a big ship can turn like that. When you let go of the rudder, let it equalize a little bit first, and then throw it all the way to the other side. Okay? It's not going to tip that way. If you're, if, you're, if you're doing this kind of thing, and you're trying to upset the boat, it's going to rock, it's going to hit, it's going to actually get into the water a bit. And what that's going to do is it's going to create, when it hits the, this part hits the water, it will create drag and slow you down, and then it will right itself. So it won't completely tip over, but um, it uh, will come very close. So here we are, I'm just showing you now, like, it's very nimble. I do have some other features to show you while we're underway. So uh, if we go to the tower, you're going to see depth below ship. Like that and you get your reading 586 meters because the rudder will break if you hit it hard enough I don't suggest running aground that is why I included that so that you can measure the distance to the uh, terrain below the, the water and not you know there's still always a chance of hitting but that should reduce it by just checking the depth if it says minus one for some reason this variable only tracks to 600 meters. So if it's deeper than 600, it will say minus one there. And I'll try to figure that out. I really don't know why it does that. It could just be a limitation of that function, but we'll find out. Um, the ship's G-force was in there from a long time ago. That just shows you how much G-force is being applied to the ship currently. Um, the reverse heading. This gives you a quick reverse heading. I, I, I know this thing shows you the heading here, and if you look on here somewhere, it probably tells you, I don't know, I can't see where it says reverse heading. For a ship, it's kind of important because you want to know what, how to backtrack. You don't want to know what, which way you came from so you can backtrack, and you always want to know where, which way is backwards. So 232, if I want to spin the ship around and go backwards, all I have to do is turn to 232, and I'm good. Um, rudder, set rudder 5 degrees to port, set rudder 5 degrees to starboard. I just have to hit this, hit the landing system, and there's my hook. So we have the hook here. So now we're going to bank into this, we're going to drop the gear, I'm going to check my speed and drop it to the proper throttle level for this aircraft, which you kind of have to memorize and do some practice runs for. But essentially what your speed should be is below 50. And if it's not, drop your speed even further come in for your landing um, again practice makes perfect so if you can't do it the first time don't get upset uh, it's just it, it takes practice that's all so you get your nice little glide path here um, if you want that purple lettering F4 gets rid of it the, si the landing system should turn on you should see a light on the carrier if it is on I'm gonna change that system but for now it turns a light on on the carrier so the landing system should be on. I'm going to let her just come down. There it is. Brakes are on. Automatically for you. She's landed. The system should now turn off. If there's a light, it should be off. Um, ideally, I want to have a green light and a red light um, and have them toggle. Uh, and that would be perfect. So that's the landing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit my 5 key, which should automatically open up my air brakes and drop my hook. Now this is a different system. This has an air brake plus a hook. So it makes for some interesting uh, combos. Um, you can choose to use my part that I put on here. Um, or you can choose just to use the hook. And that would be fine as well. So uh, it, both of them will work the same way and activate the landing system. You can land your own aircraft without the landing system. That's fine as well. You don't need to use the landing system. If you think you're amazing enough that you don't need the landing system, <laughs> you, can, you can just bypass the landing system altogether and, uh, and do it whatever way, you know, land whatever way you want. Um, by no means do you have to use the landing system. The, the landing system on the carrier plate, you can either take out or just ignore um, 
because it won't activate without this hook. And there it is. It's activated and we have an awesome stop on that one. Let's see, oh, 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 come on, work, oh no! Okay, so that flight's gone, and like I said, sometimes you just lose the planes and they're, they're they don't, you don't have to phase them out, you just let them crash eventually and that, that gets rid of them. <laughs> so I EVA, I right click the, um, now if you don't see that right away, see how it's hidden? Don't, don't think that the lift's broken. Turn your, turn your view around a little bit. Sometimes the extend button is just kind of missing. Get back into your aircraft before you fall off. And it should rel stay relatively in position. You shouldn't, it shouldn't move on the lift at all. Okay, so here we have it hunting. It's hunting now, which is what we want. Um, if it's okay if it's not perfectly this way. As long as you're over it, you're going to notice that the whole aircraft is starting to slide that way. So I have to make changes quickly in order for it not to get out of position very fast. So what we want to do is just slow it down with the brake. And we're hoping that it connects at some point around here. Um, and if it doesn't, we're going to have to drop the gear and hope that it connects then. And it may or may not. There it is. Okay, so we actually did it. Um, we connected. And I'm sorry how hard that is, but I've, inc I've actually improved the docking quite a bit. But it is still can be a chore. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, it's a tough one, but uh, it's cool. And there's a lot of cool things coming out. I'm actually going to add a few more little features to this uh, that I haven't told anybody about. But they're going to be small, but they're going to be, uh, you know, something that'll be interesting and fun. And uh, those, uh, those guardrails, <laughs> it, it should have caught that plane. It didn't. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, fix up the collider a little bit on that and uh, see if I can't make it a little bit more grabby um, so that it actually can stop something and, and prevent something from falling off and, and serve a purpose. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you're excited about it. Um, it's, it's a big step up. It is a big step up because it's a huge, it's a huge ship. But um, uh, it's a big step up in terms of features as well. So I hope you're happy about that. Thanks a lot, guys. See you next time.